Hello, Captains! It's the Doctor, and welcome to some Star Trek Online news. It's been quite a while since we've had Star Trek Online news updates, and I have missed quite a bit, for sure. And so I've gone back and looked into the past to see what lies beyond. And I have pulled up some tabs here, as you can see at the top, that we're going to go through today to go over some things that I have missed uh, all the way back to maybe August... Uh, and, of course, September here for the news. It is September 13th as of this recording. Uh, and uh, some of the news will precede that, of course. Any other new news will come in the future. So something here to look over is LeVar Burton has come to Star Trek Online. He is voicing the new mission Beyond the Nexus I have two videos of, of that up already. You can check those two videos out in the top right corner. Uh, he is voiced in, he's voicing Jordy LaForge in this new mission, and it's very, very cool. He does a great job. So this was announced a while ago. This was back in August here. Um, so this just goes over to tell us that Jordy LaForge will be joining. Um, we're happy to announce that LeVar Burton, who played Jordy LaForge, is coming to Star Trek Online and soon. In fact, on September 12th, we'll be releasing a brand new episode on the PC, Beyond the Nexus, that allows your captain to team up with Captain LaForge. You'll investigate a distress call from a galaxy-class ship whose crew is being controlled by a mysterious energy source. So this was a very fun mission. He was in this. Not only that, but that adventure will take place in a brand new, fully remodeled galaxy interior. Our environment artists have lo lovingly recreated the home of the cast for the next generation, and we can't wait to see you in it. We'll also have server-wide giveaways of the TNG Scant uniform and the Type 7 shuttle to celebrate the anniversary of this landmark television show. Saddle in because the journey with Captain LaForge is not over. He'll return in Season 14, Emergence, in October, and star in our brand new featured episode, Melting Pot. Kipley Brown returns to stow as Captain Kumarake, and she and Jordy will accompany your captain on a, to a new colony world. The Lucari and the Kintari are attempting something new, living together in harmony as one people, and Jordy is integral to the development of this new colony world. You'll arrive just in time, and what starts as a simple tour will evolve into a pitched battle for the colony's very survival. So this is very interesting. This is the first hint here. We're getting a season 14. It's called Emergence, and it's coming in October. And since this is now mid-September, that's not too far away. So season 14, right around the corner here. That will be exciting. There is an official announcement video. I'm going to go ahead and play this video, but I am going to mute the audio. If you want to watch this video in full with audio, uh, check out the link in the description. So let me mute that, but let's watch this here and see what this is about. A new home. So looks like the Kentari and Lucari are coming together. There's a Lucari right there. The And the Kentari right there. Ooh, a lot of them. For your fleet. And we have uh, Starfleet ships, Alliance ships coming in here. And there's Geordi LaForge, LeVar Barton. So that might be one of the missions or something there. Star Trek Online, and we have a teaser at the end, I think so, DS9. Didn't think they would be part of the Lucari. And the Jim Hadar. Yo, what the heck? Jim Hadar. Whoa, check that out. Victory is Life, Summer 2018. Whoa, wait a minute. That's not season 14. That's beyond season 14. Okay, so summer of next year. Something about the Jim Hadar, Victory is Life. Are they coming back to um, take vengeance or something? Because right now we're supposed to be at peace with the Jim Hadar. Ooh, that could be interesting, but that's a whole year's away. Next summer. 
That could lead into something very cool, though. Maybe a new faction, even? Who knows? Anyway, that was a neat little teaser. But the more immediate thing is obviously Season 14 coming in October with the Kentari and Lucari coming together. Um, it looks like we got some screenshots of this new world. And I've got a tab about it above. I think it's called Dranur... Something like that. Uh, we'll take a look at it. This colony won't just be the setting for Melting Pot. It will be a brand new fleet holding, which features the full five tiers. full Five full tiers of progression and rewards. Season 14 Emergence will also feature a brand new Zenkethi Red Alert. Two new fleet holding defense queues a new colony map special event, and a powerful new primary specialization called the Miracle Worker. Wow, so that's a lot of good stuff coming for Season 14. More PvE content, though, which gives me pause, only because they keep producing and pumping out this PvE content, and yeah, people play it at first when it's brand new, but then as you guys know, months down the road, it goes dry, and there's hardly anybody playing that stuff anymore. So... It just makes me worry because they keep putting a lot in there. And I don't think there's enough players to hold it all up. <laughs> That's my opinion. We've got the Zenkethi Red Alert we just heard about. The Zenkethi are not known for making idle threats. They promised that they would return with better weapons. And return they did. The Zenkethi Red Alert is a space-based five-player Red Alert style queue in the Alpha Quadrant. The Zenkethi have found a new way to protomatter bomb planets and it's up to you to stop them. The Genocidals and Kethi will be unleashing a new super weapon at unsuspecting planets, while you and four allies will have to do everything you can to prevent the catastrophic destruction. If you don't work together, the deaths of billions will be on your hands. The event is for level 50 to 60 players of all factions. It will reward Marks, Dilithium, R&D. Check out the alert when it goes live with Season 14. So, again, this sounds like a very team-oriented red alert, which is not so good for pugs because people aren't really team-oriented in pugs. So I see a lot of billions of, of deaths in that one. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I like the red alerts where you don't necessarily have to work as a team, like the Borg red alert. You just kind of go in and just do it. Um, I wish it was more like that because for pugs, that style works better. But we'll see how this works out anyway. So that's part of Season 14. We've also got an Allied Flight Deck Cruiser Bundle coming. Brand new bundle of existing Allied Starships will soon be arriving, allowing captains of any faction access to classic designs that have been revitalized for the modern age of space travel. So whatever that ship is. Not familiar with that design, to be honest with you. Starfleet shipyards have been producing a resurrected design from a founding species of the Federation. Oh, it's a Tellarite ship. Okay, the Prolem Flight Deck Assault Cruiser Tier 6. So these are Tier 6 ships. This Flight Deck Cruiser has also been produced for discerning captains in an alternate color scheme. So it's a Tellarite ship. Tellarite Tier 6 ship, basically. Meanwhile, shipyards across the Klingon Empire are embracing designs of their Orion allies, Producing the Orion Black Guard Flight Deck Assault Cruiser Tier 6. Okay, interesting designs. I can't say I like these designs too much. Not my type of ship, but maybe for somebody else it is. Not to be outdone, the Ryman Republic has moved in the direction of making their, their tenuous uh, partnership with the Sulaban more official by cooperating on the design and creation of the Sulaban Silic Flight Deck Assault Cruiser. These starships will be available in the sea store and can be purchased by level 50 players. Each of these flight deck assault cruisers will have a fleet variant made available upon release. All three faction variants share the same universal console and starship traits. So they have an IFF manipulator. This specialized suite of IFF scramblers may be used to temporarily force your enemies to fight amongst themselves for a short period of time. The primary target of the ability will be assigned as a primary opposing threat to all of their nearby allies, while targeting sensors become incapable of separating frame from foe. In addition to this, the primary target's damage resistance will also be reduced by an amount inversely proportionate to the number of foes confused. Okay, sounds overly complicated, but sure. This console also provides a passive boost to critical severity. 
with directed energy weapons and engineering readiness. This console may be equipped in any console slot, blah, blah, blah. Starship trait. After achieving level 5 in your flight deck cruiser, you will unlock the majority min minority starship trait. While this trait is active, the number of allies and foes within 10 kilometers of you will be counted depending upon whether you are in the minority, foes outnumber allies, or the majority, you gain different combat benefits. If you are in the majority, you get increased damage resistance, shield hardness, and hull regeneration. If you are in the minority, you get increased damage output and flight speed. Okay, interesting kind of deal there. These starship traits will be available in the sea store individually or they're found packaged together in the tier 6 allied flight deck assault cruiser bundle. Okay, so there you go. Some, some ships there. I can't say any of those interest me, but maybe they'll interest you. Announcing the Janur Colony Fleet Holding. So this is a new fleet holding they just talked about. Following the events of Mirrors and Smoke, the Lucari and Kintari began efforts to work together. The culmination of this effort is the Dranur Colony in the Alpha Quadrant. Both races will try and see if they can coexist peacefully, or if it's all but a pipe dream. With any luck, the two races will learn a thing or two about the other and how they can better, better their own lives. With Season 14 Emergence, Dranur Colony will become available as a new joint lucari kintari themed fleet holding, available to all fleets. Your fleet will assist the two races as they establish and develop an island on the newly terraformed world. For the first time since the introduction of the fleet starbase, player fleets will be presented with a full-sized holding comprised of a primary track and three subtracks, each with five tiers of progression. Each tier and subtrack will offer fleets new improvements to their colony world holding, as well as access to new equipment and new gameplay options. Those will be detailed further along in this dev blog. One feature that makes the Janura Colony unique is that instead of purchasing provisions in your replicator, players instead work alongside the colonists to claim resources from the environment around the colony to be used for track progression. Each subtrack will have its own resources and all three resources will be needed to upgrade the main track. As you progress in the various subtracks, you will find it easier to attain the resources and your fleet will even be able to automate a part of the resource gathering process. In addition to earning the resources by participating in activities around the colony, your fleet will be able to enact training simulations for potential invasions. The Kantari haven't survived this long without a healthy helping of paranoia, after all. Simulation provisions used to start the invasion simulation uh, can be earned by completing fleet projects and can be used by your fleet leadership to trigger these map-wide invasion events. As your fleet advances, new simulation options will become available allowing you some customization of the training simulation experience. Additionally, it will become easier to earn a stockpile of simulation provisions as you progress in the main track. The invasion simulation is a multi-location wave defense event, which allows up to 20 fleet members to participate without needing to queue. Simply travel to the Junior Colony and start the event. After every five invasion waves, participants will be given a vote to stop and claim the rewards earned so far or continue onto more difficult waves risking their earned rewards in the process. Victory in this simulation rewards players with resources and fleet marks used to progress the colony holding. Wow, so that's quite a bit of a different style of gameplay there. We'll see how it works out. Again, it's all about having enough people to saturate these kinds of things. If you have a, a fleet, but you don't have like, you know, 20 people on at the same time in your fleet, then this kind of stuff doesn't become that useful. If you have a lot of people on at one time in your fleet, uh, it could be. But I think most people usually don't have that many people on at once in their fleet. But we'll see how this turns out anyway. And it's all going to depend on how many people get in there and do it. Primary track colony. This progression track represents the culmination of your progression in three subtracks. Advancing this track primarily grants pin provisions, uh, improvements to the invasion simulation gameplay. At each tier, you will unlock one of the more following exterior visual upgrades, invasion shield relay, defended ground gain, increased hit points, invasion, provision projects, additional amenities, travel options to and from fleet holdings, blah, blah, blah. That's a simple one. Renewable energy subtrack. Uh, I'm just going to skim over this. There's a lot to read here. You can come check this, this out on the um, Star Trek Online webpage yourself if you'd like. But I'm just going to skim over this right now because this is a lot to read. Uh, we've got Lucari stuff. Let's see. 
automated battery collection, invasion defense turn improvements, elite fleet equipment options, isolated proto matter warp cores. Okay, we've got proto matter warp cores. Isolated proto matter singularity warp cores, proto matter warp cores, sustained proto matter singularity warp cores, preservation proto matter deflector arrays, intervention proto matter deflector arrays, elite secondary deflectors, proto matter impulse engines, energetic proto matter tactical consoles. I guess they're highly energetic. Kinetic. Proto matter tactical consoles. There's a lot of stuff here to look at. Once it's all in the game, I will do a tour of the uh, star base, of course, once we've maxed it out. And we'll look at all these things because there's a lot here to uh, take in, a lot of information here to take in. Um, automated ore collection, starship injury repair. This is just more stuff that unlocks as you unlock the tiers. So you've got uh, Dranur starship projectile weapons. Jernur Starship Energy Weapons, Phasers after all beam types. Just kind of looking over colony, personal shields, personal armor, security ground weapons, subtract morale, Lucari kit frames, Kintari kit frames, universal colony kit modules, a plasma shockwave turret, sounds interesting. Toxic Dart Launcher, Regenerative Invigoration, Lucari Bridge Officer Candidates, Kintari Bridge Officer Candidates. Wow, it's a lot to go over right there. Fleet Holdings are large projects that require multiple players, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. A big, 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 big fleet holding coming to work on and things to do there and many things to be available. Similar to my other... Uh, walkthroughs that I've done of fleet holdings once we max out ours all the way I will do a walkthrough of the fleet holding and we'll take a look at everything that's available once we max it out of course that'll take a while um, beyond the nexus uh, that's of course the new featured episode that's out right now um, the trilithium weight laced weaponry stuff is what's new with this and there's going to be more. You can watch my two videos I've made of this mission. And that will pretty much go over the rewards very well. So watch those two videos. Um, and then we got the Allied Flight Deck Cruiser stats. So if you're interested in the stats of these Allied ships, here they are. I'm not going to go over this too much. This is the Tellarite one. So you can pause and read all that if you want to see what that's all about. There's the Fleet Tellarite. There's a lot of information here, too, on all this. Here's the Orion Blackguard Flight Deck Cruiser. That's the Klingon one. You can pause and look at that. Here's the fleet version of that. Here's the Sulaban one. You can pause and look at that. And then here's the fleet version of that. And, of course, we already went all over the IFF manipulator and the trait. Of course, hangar pets with these because they're flight deck cruisers. So there's different hangar pets you can get. We've got a Tellarite Adamant Fighter, Phaser Energy Weapons, Quantum Torpedoes. We've got an Orion Cut Purse Fighters, Disruptor Energy Weapons with Photon Torpedoes. We've got Sulaban Veil, Veil Fighters, Plasma Energy Weapons, and Plasma Torpedoes. And, of course, different levels of those fighters. you got the standard, the advanced, and then the elite fighters as well. So that's a ton of information there, but you're welcome to go read that. Pause the video and check all that out. So that's what we know about Season 14 so far. Um, there will be a new featured episode and uh, where Jordy will reprise his role again. And we've got a new fleet holding. We've got some new ships. And um, we've got the Zinkethi Red Alert. And I mean, that's pretty much like it. It's just a few things, not a, not a large amount of things, but uh, basically more grinding stuff to go do is what it is. I wish there was more in the way of maybe some game changes. Season updates used to be more about changing or adding game features more than more than what it is now 
Now it's just become basically you get a featured episode, maybe throw in a specialization or a fleet holding, throw in a new uh, PVE content, and call it a day. And that's kind of what we're getting here. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. Season 14 in October. Uh, looking forward to the new content, of course. I just hope and wonder if there will be enough people to saturate these things. Again, you know, these, these red alerts and these fleet holding things, you know, you need a lot of people to do them, to keep playing them. And if the player base drops out and just stops playing them, then it's very hard to get into these queues and do these things. And in the short term, they will be highly played because they're brand new. But it's the long term that worries me because you go into the game now and there's many STFs that are just dead. People just do not play anymore and you cannot start up a queue, a pug. You just can't because there's not enough people playing them. There's not enough people there to play them. So sometimes, while I do enjoy the new PvE content, sometimes I think they introduce a little too much. Because if you don't have enough people, you're just really, the more you add, you're just spreading the people thinner and thinner and thinner, as, and it's already thin. So that doesn't help. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Look forward to seeing what's going to come and how it all works out and how people react to it. I'm not too excited about the ships. I don't know about you guys. The ships don't interest me one bit. I couldn't care less about the Tellarite ship, the Sulaban Romulan ship, the, uh, the Klingon Orion ship. Just not my kind of things. But maybe they are for you, so who knows. Well, that's going to conclude the news today for Star Trek Online. As more info comes out about Season 14, I will make more videos about that if there's more stuff to talk about. So thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.